We are certainly at a critical moment in time with permitting reform, and I'm from Mississippi. For the past two years, we have seen the negative effects of permitting delays on domestic energy production and consequently the high energy prices paid by American families and American industry, American businesses. But for issues such as offshore oil and gas leasing, NEPA reform and onshore electric transmission, permitting should be streamlined to get us back on track to becoming energy independent. But uh, Mr. Gourmet, with respect to transmission facilities, there are proposals under consideration that would limit a state's role in these projects that are deemed by the federal government to be of national interest. What roles do you believe states should have in planning electric transmission projects, and do you think it is appropriate to reduce or eliminate the state's ability to participate in that planning, especially if the customers they represent will be required to pay for a portion of the project's cost? So, Senator, that is the crucible of the question, and um, there's about 17 pages of my testimony that I will not try to summarize in about 45 seconds. The current system does not work, fundamentally broken. We have a balkanized power grid that is isolating communities of the country from one another, and that's why when we have tragedies like we saw with Winter Storm Uri, people are dying, because we do not have connections between the different power grids. So the key to making our nation stronger, cleaner, more secure, is to connect those regions together. And so the question we have to ask is, well, why is it not happening? It's not happening because the current processes do not create any incentive for the different regions to work together. And so the status quo does not work. Moving to a direct federal preemption, I think, is going to be very hard to convince this committee to agree to. So we've proposed what we think are some pretty thoughtful process steps that would maintain the state's role, both in permitting and also in the efforts to kind of connect these regions, but put some process behind it that's rational. So on Citing, instead of having to wait for the states to move forward, we can use the backstop authority that was already put into law, give states a chance to move forward with that permitting, but have the federal government have a response if states fail to act. It is not taking them out of the process. It's just requiring them to work within the process. On the issue of cost allocation, which is more complicated, we believe that the regions have a role to play, but we believe that they have to play that role. They can't rope it up the nation into energy and security. And so we think there's a way forward that does not either accept the dysfunctional status quo or accept what I think people fear is an over-federalization. And it's time for the Congress to, I think, dig in and find those solutions. And in your opinion, how should transmission planners determine whether an electric transmission project is a high-impact transmission project or of national interest? So I think that the criteria that were set out uh, in EPACT, I think, and reinforced by IIJA, and I think Senator Manchin has added to that, we've indicated a list of what we think are the kind of criteria to understand what a national interest project looks like. But that does not dictate approval. I think once you are in that process, then what the states need to do is look in a coordinated way at the benefits within their own borders, and then also at the regional benefits that both you know, states and regions would benefit from with those connections. But they should be the regular ways we look at the benefits of power. It should be economic. These are not trying to figure out a kind of woke national agenda. It is basically providing economic development, jobs, safety, security, re resilience, reliability. They should use the system that they're working through right now, but they actually have to speak the same language. Right now, there is no incentive for any region to think about the full benefits of a project. And as a result, the whole country is suffering. Well, should promoters of these projects, should they be required to show that the projects resolve a specific identified customer need? Every one of these projects has to be justified based on the benefits to customers being greater than the costs. There is absolutely no reason to move forward with a project that does not do that. But we have to recognize that there are benefits greater than what you're playing in your, you know, per kilowatt hour. It's a benefit for your lights not to go out. It's a benefit for your region to be able to be saved with power if you have a terrible storm. It's a benefit for you to have the capacity to bring new industries into your region. It is a benefit to have low power, low cost power brought to you from other parts of the country. So I think as long as we have an honest conversation anchored in economic benefits, we can make the decisions that protect all of our shareholders and consumers. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.